Hey, it's JP from WeWeb, and in this video, we are going to cover how to animate an element when it's appearing on the screen. So the first one will be this slight animation on our model, and then the second one will be when we scroll into view of an element, and in that case, we'll be adding the animation on an image. These kinds of micro animation that you add on your application can greatly enhance how the user interface feels like and add a little bit more polish to it. So first we are going to create the animation using the CSS animation editor, and then we'll apply this animation to our model. And we we'll use the same animation to use on our image. So let's dive in. So first let's try to tackle our model. If we look at the panel here, we can see that I've added a model component. So this one, is the one that we can find inside of the basics element inside of the add panel. So on that model, you have a display property and it is bound to a variable that comes with the component that is model opens. And if I go to my button here that I've created, we can see that we ha I have a toggle model workflow. And what it does is, is just toggling the model open variable. So with this exclamation mark at the beginning, it means that I'm giving it the inverse value of the current value of model open. So if it's true, it will be false. And if it's false, it will be true. So what it, this button allows me to do is to just open the model. So what we want when our model appears is that we want the model to slide in from the bottom, but something very subtle and we want it to fade in. So bring the opacity from 0% to 100%. If we look at the properties of our model, so if I click on the model section here, we can see that we do have an animation property. Uh, we have a bunch of them and something that could uh, work is the appears from bottom animation. But if we try this one out, we can see that it's going out of the screen and it's not really what we want to do. We want something a little bit more subtle. So we are going to remove this animation. Let's put it to the default state. And we are going to select the content div. So that is our card. And if we go down to the animation section, we're going to add some properties to it and define our animation. So for the duration, we want something that is pretty quick. We don't want the user to wait for the contents. So we're going to go with 400 milliseconds. And in the iterations property, we don't want the animation to go in loop. What we want is just to play it once. So when the card appears. So that's it for the properties. And if we open the keyframe editor, we can see that uh, we have our two markers. So 0% the initial state and the end state. What we want in our case is to select our initial state. And we're going to go up to the transform property and we're going to on the Y axis, we're going to bring the model down to something like 60 pixels. And then what we want is to bring the, the opacity down to 0%. So if we try this animation, we can see that at 0%, it has this transform and opacity modification. And then when we reach 100%, it goes back to the default state. Now that we defined our animation, we can close the editor. And if we try this on, and I go back to my button, we can see that we do have this slight animation going upwards and the card is fading in. And the animation will be triggered every time that the card appears because when we toggle on and off the model, what's happening is that the card is being re-rendered each time. So that's why the animation is initialized each time. So that's how you add the subtle animation to a card when it appears. 
Of course, you can apply that to any element that you want to animate on render. You can add that on conditional inputs, on conditional buttons, or anything that you want. For our next example, we're going to make an image appear when, we, when it's crossed into a view. And we basically want to apply the same animation. So what we're going to do is that if I go back to my content div, we're going to save the animation into a class. So that way we can reuse that class on other elements. So if I go to select or create a class, I'm going to create a new one. And we can see that on our content, we do have a bunch of elements applied to it. I'm going to unselect all. And the only things that I will save will be the duration, the iteration, and the keyframe that are in the animation section. I'm going to add a name to it. Let's call it something like animation slide in. And I'm going to create this class. So the next element that we want to animate will be our image. So I've got an image here, that's just a basic image. And what we want is that when we scroll into a view, we want the animation to launch. The thing is, I cannot just apply the animation to the default state of the image because since the image is rendered on page load, the animation will launch at that time. So that's not what we want. We want the animation to launch when the user scrolls the elements into view. So what we need to do is to actually detect the elements position on the page. And then at that moment, we want to add the animation. So to do that first, we will add a new state to our element. Let's call that state in view. So the condition property here will indicate when the state is applied. So what we want on that condition is to detect if the element is on the page. So to detect that, we are going to add a watch call position. To enable this property, we need to add an ID to it, and then we can toggle this on. If we go back to our condition here and bind and open the band model, we can see that we have a components position inside of the second tab of our formula. If I unroll this, we can see that we have our image element, and inside of that object, we have a bunch of values. The thing that will be of interest to us on that specific case will be the X and Y percent. So these are percentages that will indicate the position, the relative position of the element on the page. So if we try, if we scroll on the page, we can see that this value is indeed being modified. So if I go up here, we can see that the value is negative. So as soon as the element reaches the page, it's going above zero percent. And as soon as the element leaves the page from the bottom, we can see that it's going above 100 percent. So if we go back to our condition in view here, we want the Y percent to be between zero and 100 percent. So I'm going to add the Y percent. I'm going to check that if it's above zero and if that same variable is below 100. So if the element is in view, it's true. And when it's going out of view, it becomes false. So now that the condition is set, what we can do now is add our animation and we need to add it when we are on the in-view state. So this class is only inside of the in-view state. And if we go back to the preview mode, if I scroll out of view and back again, we can see that the animation is launching. So that's how you create and add an animation to an element when it renders or when it scrolls into view. I can't wait to see what you create with this 
and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.